I will not lie to you, I'm having the time of my life. Who does not like tool? I mean, tool darling, tool, 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 and more tool. <laughs> Hey gorgeous, welcome to my channel. I'm Kapana Shimange and this is how I do things. A show where you send me your questions and I'll let you know how I would do things and I can take it as entertainment, use it as advice, take it, don't take it, use it. Don't use it at all darling, so do what you will with it. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because nah, me, heck. I'm no professional. I'm no professional whatsoever. I'm just a girl who's got too much tool around her and I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes. Today I want to talk about something so important. So, Shia Moisture, who is sponsoring this video today, asked me this question. It's like, Kapana, are you still committed to taking care of yourself, taking care of your hair? And I was just like, I'm not. I've let some things slip. Let me tell you a little story. My hair. My hair is a metaphor for myself. I've been spending time on so many things other than myself. I haven't been having my wash days the way that I usually do. I haven't been having my soaks the way that I usually do. And what I've been doing is just covering up the problem. At the beginning of this pandemic, we all kind of fell in love with self-care and we're just like, oh, I'm gonna do the things that I want to do, finally have time to take care of my hair and take care of myself. But a long period of time of taking care of yourself, not going to the salon, having people to support you, means that we kind of got fatigued. We kind of got tired of the whole self-care thing and we got tired of all of the energy that we have to put into our hair and ourselves. So I started to kind of abuse my hair. My hair was dry, it needed some help, but I just kept on putting it under braids just to get rid of it because I was kind of tired of my hair and I was tired of this whole natural hair thing and I was irritated. So I put it under braids for a whole month wouldn't really deep condition it, none of that stuff. Take out the braids, put in new braids. So I kept on piling up this damage on my hair because I just didn't take the time to have a full wash day. Deep condition my hair, treat it, have a mask on it so I can repair it. So the situation only got worse and worse and worse. So finally, I got so frustrated with my hair, I straightened it just to make my life easier. But that just made the situation worse finally got to a point where it's just like oh my goodness it's either i commit to taking care of my hair or i cut it all off and i made a promise with myself i'm not cutting my hair off i'm going to take care of it it's going to be healthy so i had to recommit to my hair enter sheer moisture they sent me a beautiful box of recommitting to my hair where shea said yes Yes to healthy hair, yes to self-care, and yes to spending time taking care of what's important to me. And what's important to me is my natural hair. So my hair was more damaged. It was worse than it was before. But I recommitted to taking care of it. It may have taken a little bit longer to get it back and bouncy again, but I managed to do it. And this is how. So let's just be honest with ourselves. My hair was so damaged. It needed so much love. I had so much heat damage from being bored of my hair, not taking care of it. And the best way to really revive your hair after a season of just neglect is a good treatment. Getting deep into your hair, making sure that it is healthy, it is clean, and that you give it back all of the goodness that it's been missing out on so this box sent to me by sheer moisture to help me recommit to my hair was filled with jamaican black castor oil products and the number one product that i'm going to be focusing on in this video is the strengthen and restore treatment mask 
this is the thing that really helped my hair come back to life so i first washed my my hair first with the jamaican black castor oil um, shampoo then afterwards i conditioned my hair I don't know if you can see this, but there is a bit of hair that is starting to revert and just bounce back. It's just these pieces here that are like the main concern. But I can see, like on this one, the hair, they are hair starting to revert. So there's like a patch that I overdid it. That's where the main concern is. But. We hold on, yes, we hold on. So once I had the treatment mask in my hair, I put a towel on my head. First I had put in a conditioning um, sheet first and then I put on the towel just to make sure my hair is nice and warm as I kept it in for the next 30 minutes. After that, it was a full pamper day and I needed to epilate. So I grabbed a towel, sat down, watched some YouTube, epilated under my arms as well as my legs because mama needed to self care. And this was my day to do that all. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes with the conditioner in, with the treatment in, and my hair's looking extremely healthy. It's looking good. So, what I'm doing now is that I'm just combing it through and detangling my hair while I'm sitting here. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any struggle ends. I'm not seeing like hair that didn't revert. Let me just say that. I do think I am going to trim though. So once the conditioner was in my hair for more than 30 minutes, I then combed it through my hair and put my hair into twists. This makes it much easier for me to wash it out without getting any knots in my hair. I really love this treatment mask because it gave me the restoration that my hair needed. My curls bounced back. Um, some of the heat damage that I, hair, that I had, my hair started to actually revert. And once I was done, I then put on the strengthen and restore leave-in conditioner just so that I could start my hair now styling your hair is also very important how you style it because if you style it in ways that leave your hair dry or damage or pull your hair too much you're just going to go back to square one which is what I didn't want so I decided to trim my hair just a little bit and then put on some flexi rods to get this really cute fro going on and the hairstyle that I got actually lasted me close to a week with those flexi rods so my hair feels so much better it feels nice and thick and my hair has always loved Jamaican black castor oil it's been the number one product for my hair it always makes my hair just bounce back and that is exactly what the sheer moisture range did for my hair and these are the end results my hair is flourishing I'm so happy with the end results my hair looks and feels so amazing I still have a journey to go forward with in terms of making sure that I get rid of all the heat damage that I got but I am recommitted to take care of my hair she has said yes and now it's time for you to say yes too and join in the fun. Stand a chance to win your very own Shia Said Yes recommitment box filled with Shia Moisture, Coconut and Hibiscus range of products or the Jamaican Black Castor Oil range, a Love Kings Satin Duke and so much more. All you have to do is visit shiamoisture.sa on Instagram to find all the instructions as well as a digital vow code and share your commitment vows via Insta stories or Facebook stories and tag shiamoisture.sa. You have to follow Shia Moisture and a bonus, share a picture or video of you and your curls and remember to tag Shia Moisture. That's all you have to do. Head over to at Africa for more details. When you stop taking care of yourself, it can be unhealthy. It can literally lead to you being in hospital because you're not taking care of yourself. Things start to fall apart. Things that you love, things that you used to enjoy, you don't enjoy as much anymore because you haven't been committed to taking care of them. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you about the things that happen, all the bad things that happen when you don't commit to taking care of yourself. When you don't put yourself first as a priority, what starts to fall apart and what you can do to actually change that around. Keep watching. 
Number one is emotional fatigue. Have you ever felt like, you know what, I just don't have the energy for other people's issues. Your friend wants to tell you about her man, she wants to tell you about her babies, she wants to tell you what's going on at home, and you're just like, listen, I actually don't have the time or the effort. You just don't feel like you wanna to talk to people because they're gonna to come to you with all their issues and all their problems, and honestly, you don't have the time or the effort to talk about those things, so please just go away. I, I just, I, I keep goodly, I keep goodly. Uh, please, please don't. It's called emotional fatigue because you don't want to hear nobody's problems because honestly it takes the same amount of energy to solve your problems as it does to solve someone else's and because you're not focusing on yourself other people's problems just look like huge energy sappers so you're just like don't come at me with anything that's because you're not taking care of yourself if you give yourself love then it's easy to give other people love and because you haven't been giving yourself love you've got no love to give number two is burnout Burnout can be physical. It leads you to the hospital to a point where you are so fatigued that your body completely crashes. Some people when they go through burnout, they get sick. So they catch something like a cold, they'll have headaches, they'll start coughing, they won't have an appetite. And that is all lead, that all is burnout. When you work yourself and you work your body and you work your emotions to a point where your body stops you. Because you're not taking time off to take care of yourself, your body's like, uh uh, I'm doing this by force. And you get sick and you completely crash. Some people have known to faint in the office. Some people leave the office feeling okay and all of a sudden they get a headache. They start coughing, they start sneezing and then they're out for the next few days. Why? Burnout, it's physical. It's important to take time to yourself. So as much as it may seem like taking a whole day to deep condition my hair and taking a long bubble bath and putting a mask on my face may seem like all very stupid things to do, they prevent you from going on to burn out. When you give so much energy to everyone else that you're not giving yourself energy, things start to fall apart. And you can start to see it. Your hair can fall out. I've had hair fall out from stress. It's the most scariest thing. That is the first thing to go when I am stressed. It's my hair. It falls out in chunks. I could just do this and I could have a big ball of hair in my head. This is so scary. Number three, things go unhealed. Meaning that things that needed your attention in the first place, your energy may have been low, but you just continue to move even though you know you're tired. You know that you need to spend time on yourself, but you ignore it and you continue to just spend time on other people. Your hair is damaged, you're not fixing it, you continue to move anyway. All of those things go unhealed. And when they go unhealed, they only get worse because you're not paying time and attention to yourself. And that is the problem with a lack of self care. Things get worse. They don't get better when you ignore them. You need to spend time on yourself. Number four, it's harder to fix something that is broken. And that's why it's important to have consistent self care. You burn out because you go for a long time without taking care of yourself. And that's how your, ba your body just breaks down. Your nails are in a bad state because you don't have the protein that you need or you're not taking the supplements that you need over time to keep them good. Your skin is unhealthy, you're breaking out, your hair is falling. All of those things happen because they're broken, because we haven't been taking the time and the effort to prioritize ourselves and what is important to us. And eventually our bodies just act out against us. So take care of yourself. So how do you fix this whole situation? Number five, avoid all the things that you know are bad for you. For me, I had to pack away all of my heat products. Never ever gonna look at them again because clearly they're bad for my hair and I need my hair to recover. For you, it may be that you need to block out some time on your calendar to make sure that you have time for yourself. It may be that you need to delete your social media profiles to make sure that you take care of your mental health, that you don't get overwhelmed. You need to avoid the things that you know are bad for you. You know that every single time you're on a certain platform, you take too much time in the morning, you don't wake up early and you don't go to gym. You know that when you drink certain things or when you have certain behavior, 
here, you end up feeling like crap in the morning. So stay away from all the things that make you feel bad, all the things that get you back into that pit of not taking care of yourself. Number six, recommit to taking care of yourself actually take some time to write yourself some vows to say that I commit to taking care of me. I commit to two hours of uninterrupted self-care to check in with myself, check in with my God, check in with my spirit to make sure I am happy. Recommit, write down a pledge to yourself that you will be good to yourself no matter what, no matter how busy life gets, I will be good to myself. Number seven, set rules and boundaries to make sure you don't land up where you were before. So whether it is making sure you wake up early in the morning, putting your phone on flight mode and do not disturb during certain times, those are the boundaries. If you have an auto response on your emails, every time somebody emails you to remove the anxiety of having to respond immediately, have an auto response saying, hey, received your email, I'll get back to you in the next 12 to 48 hours or whatever it is. But set boundaries and set rules for yourself and for everybody around you. You respect a person if you know exactly what to expect from them, but you have to communicate your boundaries in order for people to respect them. And finally, number eight, accept that you are worth consistent effort. Yes, you are. We sometimes think that we're not worth the effort all the time. I'm always working on myself, always working on myself because you're worth it. You are, you're worth constant effort. You are worth constant love from other people and obviously yourself too. So accept that and commit to always taking care of yourself and always looking after yourself, taking the time to care and love for thyself and all the things that are important to you. My hair loves what I have done with it. It is happy and it is on the road to recovery thanks to Sheer Moisture, the sponsors for today's video. I hope that you guys love this video and I hope that you'll be taking care of yourself too. Please do send me pictures of your hair as well to let me know how you are recommitting to yourself, to your self-love, to your hair, your beauty, your time, your journaling, your praying, whatever it is that you need to recommit to. Comment down below and let me know what stood out the most for you and how you'll be recommitting to yourself. Until later days, thanks for watching. Hey gorgeous, thank you so much for watching and thank you for making it right until the end. If you made it till here and you're not subscribed to my channel, what are you doing? Click on this button right here to subscribe and feel free to binge watch. Until later days, I'm Kobana Shemangi and this is How I Do Things.